Hello everyone, and welcome to this episode of This is Islam. I'm Kai, and in today's episode we look at the religious status of slaves when they run away from their masters. There is a set of three hadiths in Sahih Muslim that say that any slave who runs away from his master's enslavement, i.e. he refuses to continue being a slave, then this amounts to kufr. He forfeits his rights, and his prayers to Allah are no longer acceptable. The first hadith. Quote, it is narrated on the authority of Jarir that he heard the Holy Prophet saying, the slave who fled from his master committed an act of infidelity as long as he would not return to him. Mansur observed, By God, this hadith was narrated from the apostle, may peace and blessings be upon him, but I do not like that this should be narrated on my authority here in Basra. End quote. The second hadith. Quote, it is narrated on the authority of Jarir that the messenger of Allah, may peace and blessings be upon him, observed, the slave who fled from his master, responsibility with regards to him was absolved. End quote. And the third hadith, quote, Jarir bin Abdullah reported it from the Holy Prophet, when the slave runs away from his master, his prayer is not accepted. End quote. Imam Nawawi's commentary gives us insight into the Muslim mindset. Quote, the Prophet says in the second of these three hadiths that the runaway forfeits his rights. Slaves in the Muslim state were treated differently from everywhere else. They had rights, and the Prophet repeatedly stressed that they must be treated with kindness and never overworked or abused in any way. The Prophet refers here to the fact that slaves were given guarantees that they would not be punished or locked up by their masters. By running away, however, they forfeited such guarantees. The third hadith quotes the Prophet as saying that when a slave runs away, his prayer is not acceptable. Qadi Iyad agrees with Imam al-Mazari's view that this applies to one who considers running away lawful. In this case, he is considered an unbeliever, and neither his prayer nor anything else will be acceptable. The Prophet mentions prayer to indicate that other actions are unacceptable. Sheikh Abu Amr ibn al-Salah disagrees with this view, maintaining that unacceptability also applies to a runaway who does not consider running away lawful. That his prayer is unacceptable does not necessarily mean that it is not valid. Therefore, when a runaway prays, his prayer is valid but unacceptable. Its unacceptability is based on this hadith because it is coupled with an act of disobedience to God. It is valid because it fulfills all the conditions that are required when a person prays. There is no contradiction here. Its unacceptability means its reward is forfeited but its validity means that it need not be repeated and the runaway does not incur the punishment of neglecting prayer. End quote. So just a side note, it's quite interesting that someone who is to be considered a kafir still has valid prayers, but those prayers are just not acceptable. Ponder that. Let it bounce around in your head a bit. That's some really high IQ Muslim logic right there. I would expect the Muslim response to be that should the slave return to his master and be considered a Muslim again, then he need not make up the prayers. But there's more. In his commentary to a later hadith, Imam Nawawi writes, quote, In the case of freeing slaves, the purpose is to give a person what he needs, which is to free him from the humiliation of slavery. End quote. So, a Muslim slave who runs away not wanting to live with the humiliation of being a slave is not only disobedient to Allah, but is a kafir before Allah. So follow the logic. Slavery is humiliating. Running away from enslavement makes one a kafir. Then that means slavery is divinely ordained and Allah wills Muslims to be humiliated. Now, just to clear up any confusion that some of you may have, the Hadiths and Imam Nawawi are talking about Muslims who are slaves. They are not talking about non-Muslim slaves. We know this because the person running away becomes a kafir. One can only become a kafir if they were first Muslim. Thank you for tuning into this episode. Next time on This is Islam, 
I will discuss Satanic Salat, that when the sun is about to rise, Satan puts his head in its way so that the unbelievers who prostrate before the sun as it rises appear to be prostrating before him. Stay tuned.